Ayan na, kamusta kayo dyan mga kameta? Ito na, ito na, ito na. Weekend edition na natin ito. Alam ko makulit na makulit tayo over the past uh, few days. Uh, alam natin na, naku po, ang dami natin na pag-usapan over the <laughs> past 24 hours pa lang. Kath Neil, Neil, uh, ano pa, SMNI franchise. Pinag-usapan natin kung, kung pwede bumalik ang ABS, CBN, pwede rin natin... Pinag-usapan din natin mga kameta yung mga love life ng mga kasama natin na hindi naman. Pinag-usapan din natin ang ICC. Ayan, pag-usapan naman natin isang bagay na mahalaga. Of course, para sa atin at malapit sa puso natin. At ito ay dahilan na talagang pumasok tayo sa arena ng uh, public discussion and punditry. Narinig niyo ba ako mga kameta? Sinisound check ko lang. Hopefully gumagana itong uh, sound systems natin. Tintest lang natin. Pakisabi guys ako okay mga... Audio natin. Ito, ito, ito mga kameta. Bago matapos ang linggong ito, uh, medyo i-recap natin yung mga big developments dyan. Pero pag-isapan din natin ito mga latest nangyari sa West Philippines. Eh, because uh, kung nakikinig po kayo sa news, malalaman nyo na actually kaka-inaugurate po natin ng bagong facilities. no? May mga bago tayong mga pasilidad dyan sa Kalayan Group of Islands. Particularly dyan sa Tito Island, gumawa po tayo ng bagong uh, Coast Guard. Facility, if I'm not missing, a two-story Coast Guard facility. At uh, mahalaga ito dahil uh, pinapakita ito na uh, hindi tayo ano, sumusuko at tuloy-tuloy po ang laban natin dito sa Pilipinas. In fact, mga kameta, pag titignan nyo, pag titignan nyo mga kameta, oh, gumagana, okay, thank you kay Sir Ian, ha? gumagana yung audio natin, uh, test lang natin. Klaro ba yung audio natin? Pakisabi ko okay yung audio natin. Ha? Pasensya na mga kameta, oh, nagtetest-test din tayo. Anyway, Balikan natin ito mga kameta because ito mukhang palaban na talaga ang Pilipinas eh. Mukhang palaban na talaga ang Pilipinas at hindi lang tayong palaban. Medyo uh, ano na, uh, medyo worried yung mga kapitbahay natin na baka magkaroon na tayo ng giyera dito kung tuloy-tuloy ang ganitong dynamics. And then we also have the situation na kung saan si uh, Secretary Gilbert Jotoro sinasabi niya na parang halos useless na kung uh, kausapin natin in China. But of course, in a very specific context, pag-usapan natin yan. But uh, this is big. This is big, mga kameta. Because what we are dealing with uh, is what you can call as uh, gaslighting. Gaslighting. Because may mga scholars, mga scholars ng motherland, yan, mga ganyan na experts, Mga scholars na wala naman scholarly output na <laughs> ewan ko kung paano naging scholar mo yan. Alam mo, hindi ka maging expert kung nag-graduate ka lang ng isang degree. You know what, to be an expert, you have to publish ISKI, Scopus, high-level book publications, mga ganun level. Alright? Anyway, putting that aside, I mean, free marketplace of ideas naman. Anyone is entitled to their opinion as long as it's informed. Pero bago mo naman tawag yung sarili mong expert or magpatawag ka ng sarili mong expert, eh medyo... Medyo ano, magpakita tayo ng gilas, magpakita tayo ng scholarly output, hindi lang yung mga uh, thesis lang natin sa tabi-tabi or yung mga sinapit lang natin bilang estudyante. Diba? Ang mahalaga yung ano na produce mo bilang isang uh, academic, isang researcher, isang scholar at the highest levels, no? including ISI, Scopus, mga peer-reviewed publications. But anyway... What are we supposed to talk about mga kameta? Okay, ang kitang-kita ni medyo mahaba yung araw natin, but... Uh, I hope I'm, I'm going to be sensible in the coming few minutes and so by talking about something very sensitive. Kasi pag titignan natin itong mga kameta, marami sa ating mga kababayan ay nagagalit na at naiinis na dahil sa kanilang palagay, uh, hindi tayo tinutulungan ng ating mga kapitbahay. At uh, may mga nagsasabi pa na parang useless itong ASEAN at yung mga kapitbahay natin sa ASEAN ay mga uh, pro-China lahat. Uh, ganito yung uh, rhetoric. And then sa kabilang banda naman, may mga kasama tayo dyan, lalo yung mga kadiyas natin dyan na <laughs> tinitwist ang mga pinagsasabi ng mga kapitbahay natin para sasabihin naman na, ah, ayan, tignan mo naman, tayo lang walang nakukuha, lahat sila pro-China, friendly sa China, kaya masayang buhay nila. Now let me tell you, mga kameta, mali lahat yung mga taong yan, alright? Mali lahat ang mga taong yan at uh, I will explain to you why, alright? I'll explain to you why. On multiple levels. And this is very important because recently, uh, itong uh, leader po ng Singapore, uh, you know, a very good and very sound and very articulate leader, said something about na uh, parang nag-caution siya na ingat tayo doon sa nangyayari sa West Philippines. I think it was a very subtle, cautionary 
uh, statement, etc. Pero na-twist ito ng mga propagandis dito sa Pilipinas, lalo yung mga kadidiyas natin, ng mga others na, na kumbaga, uy, tingnan mo, ba't Singapore, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Okay, let's put things in the context, mga kameta, alright? Let's put things in the context. Let's be very, very clear about this. Uh, alam natin pagdating sa Singapore, they're very sensitive. They don't want to interfere in, in our domestic affairs. And I don't think Prime Minister Lee meant it in an offensive way. I, I don't think he meant to lecture us per se. He just expressed in a very genuine way as a fellow Asian country yung direction ng nangyari sa West Philippine Sea. So in fairness to him, and I think if uh, given the chance, they would, they're going to explain uh, more. But, eto mga kameto. Yan, mga kamekos. Bumabalik na yung mga kamekos. Pero mga kamekos, eto... Huwag na natin gamitin ng mekos mga kameta kasi pag gamitin natin yung mekos mekos na yan mga kameta dun sa masisira yung mga shorts na ginagawa natin di ba? Dapat maganda yung subtitle natin Ito, 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 ito Mga kameta, we have to put things in the perspective because if you look at the ASEAN may kanya-kanya tayong diskarte on how to deal with the West Philippine Sea disputes Now, una-una karamihan ng mga bansa sa ASEAN ay walang direct disputes with China sa West Philippine Sea. So, ang mga claimant lang nagtagasin na active ay Malaysia, Philippines, and Vietnam. Philippines. Philippines and Vietnam. Now, having said that, may mga, kasama, may mga ka-ASEAN member din tayo na napaka-dependent sa aid from China at totally, walang interest dyan sa West Philippine Sea. Almost. Almost zero. Diba? Ito yung mga countries na katulad ng Cambodia or landlocked countries like Laos. Or yung mga sobrang malaya na sa atin, katulad ng Myanmar, which is sa gitna ng isang civil war. And then, you have other countries na influential sa region and internationally, katulad ng Indonesia, katulad ng Singapore, katulad ng Thailand, na walang direct disputes sa South China Sea at West Philippine Sea, pero may interest sila sa stabilidad sa ating region. Alright? So, we have to distinguish that. And depende dun sa kanyang geographical position, depende dun sa kanyang lang Uh, sa kalidad ng kanilang uh, relationship with China at depende dun sa kanilang uh, threat perceptions no at uh, at yung kanilang level of security cooperation with other partners and allies and powers katulad ng United States so, iba yung kanilang positioning dito sa West Philippines issue so the first thing we have to keep in mind is it's impossible to get exactly the same points of views because sobrang diverse po ang level ng interest natin vis-a-vis the West Philippines sa loob ng ASEAN. Pangalawa, geographically speaking, ang Pilipinas po ay very exceptional unique country. Uh, for instance, ang Pilipinas ay mas malapit sa Taipei yung, uh, pag, from Manila, right? Isang oras pa lang nasa Taipei ka na. Ang layo ng Singapore, ang layo ng Malaysia, ang layo ng Jakarta, ang layo ng Bangkok. To isang hindi malayo rin na rin Hanoi, 3-4 hours. Pero Taipei, 1 hour, nandun ka na. So, kitang-kita mo na yung geography natin, iba. Pangatlo, at dito, exceptional pa rin ang Pilipinas. Tayo po ay isang, tri- isang treaty ally ng United States. Ang mga ibang ASEAN countries ay hindi. In fact, I would argue that yung treaty alliance ng Thailand at sa United, at United States ay medyo questionable yung treaty alliance nila. It, it doesn't have the same structure and provisions as yung treaty alliance na meron ng Amerika at Pilipinas at meron ng Amerika at Japan, for instance. Although, iba rin yung sa Japan at sa Pilipinas on a certain level. But, Sobrang malayo yung kalidad at yung kasaysayan ng relationship ng Thailand at, at, at Estados Unidos kumpara sa relasyon ng Pilipinas at Estados Unidos. Right? Now, we also have to keep in mind mga kameta na ang bawat bansa sa loob ng ASEAN ay umiiba din ang kanilang mga stance sa West Philippine Sea. Tingnan mo yung Pilipinas pa lang. Kay President Aquino, dinala ang China sa International Court. Alright? At nag-sign ng ETCA. Kay Digong, binabaliwala, at least si Digong mismo, binabaliwala ang ating uh, arbitration award, uh, na victory, at binabaliwala. Hindi nga, binabaliwala lang eh. E, e, ano eh, ginaganyan na eh. Binabastos pa yung ating alayansa with America. So, ang layo nung policy ni Digong from policy na Aquino. And then ngayon naman si BBM, iniba na naman niya kay Digong. So, medyo hybrid or medyo new dialectical synthesis ang ginagawa niya to be Hegelian about this. So, kung titignan mo, yung position ng isang bansa nga, katulad ng Pilipinas, ay paiba-iba rin. So, unrealistic po na mag-expect tayo ng exactly the same position among ASEAN countries. So, that should be our factual recognition. No? Yun ang dapat first uh, order of things. No? Na i-recognize natin na sobrang diverse po yung points of view natin at saka yung threat perception natin at umiiba 
yung position ng bawat ng bansa. Now, may mga na-publish tayo, marami tayo na-publish dito, including yung isang latest publication natin with Latrobe University where I talk about 50 shades of hedging. Which brings me to the issue of hedging, mga kameta. Pangalawa, yung konsepto ng hedging is very, very important. Ano ibig sabihin ng hedging, mga kameta? Sa ilalim ng hedging strategy, kahit ikaw ay may aliansa with America or ikaw ay napaka malapit sa China for that matter, pag titignan mo lahat ng mga Asian countries, may sarili silang version ng hedging. Uh, at kung titignan mo yung hedging, eh, ito ay isang strategy kung saan medyo ilang ka, medyo hindi ka 100% sure. And what you do under a hedging strategy is that what you're trying is, is, is that, you know, you're leaning on one power against the other power but you're not burning your bridges with the other superpower. Right? So you're trying to find this perfect balance Itong sweet spot sa gitna ng mga competing superpowers. Now, in the case of the Philippines, dahil treaty ally natin ang United States, parating nakalin tayo ng konti. Even yung panahon ni Digong, even uh, during the time of Rodrigo Duterte, despite all his efforts, we're still the U.S. treaty ally. Right? So meron tayo mga networks of interdependence na naka-embed tayo dun sa bilateral alliance natin. So, we are leaning towards U.S., but we're, you're trying to reach out to the, uh, to, medyo parang parang boxing yun eh. Naka-lean back ka to the right, to the left, depending on ano mo, and then, naghahanap ka ng range mo, di ba? <laughs> parang nag-MMA tayo. No, so, a hedging strategy is kind of a third way, you know? Is, 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 is neither choosing between this side against that side, so, kinatawag na balancing, for instance, siding with the, number one superpower against the rising superpower, or it's also not bandwagoning, meaning siding with the rising superpower against the declining superpower. It's a kind of a third way. It's kind of a middle ground, whereby you're not fully aligning with one side, but you're leaning more to one side or, than the other. It's asymmetrical. At pwede mo rin ibayin yan, uh, depende sa issue, depende sa panahon, depende sa threat perception. So, short of a war-like situation, mga kameta, Useful itong hedging strategy na ito because it gives you room for maneuver. It allows smaller countries like the Philippines to exercise a lot of strategic autonomy. Now, obviously, iba yung maging hedging strategy ng isang bansa katulad ng Malaysia na historically very strong economic relationship with China at hindi gano kaganda yung kanilang security or even cultural relationship with the United States. O alam natin, Malaysia bilang isang major, Muslim majority country, marami silang disagreement with the United States on Gaza, on Palestine, on Afghanistan, so on and so forth. No? And then, Indonesia, Muslim majority din, pero medyo iba yung positioning. Kasama din sila sa G20, medyo they see themselves as a rising superpower or rising great power, at least middle power na sila. And iba rin sa Vietnam, because ang Vietnam, even if palaban sa China, dahil sa geography niya, next to... China lang siya, may direct border siya on land, meron din siya maritime uh, disputes with China. So, dalawa yung point of vulnerability. In fact, potentially, tatlo yung point of vulnerability to Vietnam because katabi rin niya yung mga pro-China countries or allegedly pro-China countries. Not to mention, pagdating sa Vietnam, a huge part of yung kanilang mga imports na, no, ay galing sa China. Yung mga imports na ginagamit nila, yung mga intermediate goods na ginagamit nila, to make the manufacturing export products na pinapadala sa West. So, napakalaki yung dependence ng Vietnam sa China. Nevertheless, hindi pichugi ng Vietnam, hindi sila patalo, so lumalaban sila. But, there's another thing that makes Vietnam unique in its own sense. They're a communist country. So, meron silang communist-to-communist -communist relationship with China. So, I can go on and on and on and on, mga kameta, showing to you that it's not an either-or positioning. It's not a pro-China, pro-US positioning. Although, Arguably, Cambodia ay medyo sobrang malapit na. So, siguro, Cambodia, pag itong China, itong US, sobrang nakaganon ng Cambodia. Not totally siding with China against US, hindi ito alliance, pero sobrang nakalin siya dito. Ang Pilipinas naman, medyo parang mirror. ba? Medyo baliktad. Habang karamihan ng mga bansa sa ASEAN ay medyo nasa gitna. At umiiba yung kanilang positioning. Medyo may, may ano, Michael Jackson. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is what you call hedging. Hedging, right? So you're not fully aligning with one superpower against the other. Because nga lahat tayo mga kameta ay, uh, lahat tayo mga kameta ay, ay traumatized dun sa Cold War na nangyari. No? Nung Cold War na nangyari. So what we're hoping to do mga kameta is to avoid that kind of situation. Right? So it's what you call hedging strategy. It's diversity. So parang, eh, at ang concept ng hedging ay kinuha yan sa financial uh, sector. I mean, yung hedging na ginagawa ng mga investors, right? You don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't put all your 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 money in you know or in in one product, right? You you have to, you have to have a diversified portfolio, right? So, 
uh, medyo mag-lean ka na more on this product compared to this product just to hedge if ever hindi nag-work itong investment mo. So, it's kind of the same. It's kind of similar. Right? So, short of a full-blown Cold War sa, kit- sa pagitan ng US at China, hedging is the most reasonable strategy. And as I said, the extreme are potentially Philippines leaning far more to the US vis-a-vis China and then Cambodia to the other side. Right? Now, you can look at the region in a multipolar sense. At one point, even Russia was very powerful. So, Myanmar and Vietnam ay napakalapit sa Russia. In fact, Vietnam for a very long time napakalapit sa Russia. Mas malapit pa sa Russia kasi China and United States. Diba? So, medyo triangular yung kanilang hedging. Diba? So, it, again, it's kind of similar actually like mixed martial arts, right? Yeah. So, you have to hedge. So, so, this is not about pro-China, pro-US per se, but it's about asymmetrical balancing, right? It's about saan ka medyo naglilin, di ba? Si Digong kasi, parang gusto niyang pipilitin na papunta sa kabila from US side to China side. Pero hirap na hirap siya kasi andun yung mga institutional uh, para, ma, ma, baka maano tayo. Andun yung mga institutional linkages at the highest levels between Philippines and US. Kaya medyo nahihirapan siya. So, in short, mga kameta, ASEAN is really essentially 50 shades of hedging. Different countries in ASEAN leaning towards one power against the other without necessarily choosing between the two of them. Now, interesting yung mga kameta, ang problema kasi dito is yung mga na hindi nag-agree kay Marcos Jr. Kasi yung policy natin ngayon sa Pilipinas ay lean tayo ng lean tayo ng more and more towards US at more and more nagiging problematic yung relationship natin sa China. So we're doing more deterrence against China rather than engagement. And just to give you an idea how serious the situation has become, you have the Defense Secretary of the Philippines openly questioning even the value of direct diplomacy with China at this point in time. Although, I find that interesting because I think I'd rather ask the Department of Foreign Affairs about it. But shortly after this, mga kameta, uh, we'll talk about uh, Singapore. Because Singapore, is, I think, is a very interesting case because I think this conversation, one way or another, was prompted by the comments by the Singaporean leader. So, so medyo nandito na tayo kung saan may mga headlines ka sa Pilipinas. Of course, this is not the full context of what the Defense Secretary said. In fairness, medyo mas nuance yung sinabi ni Secretary Gibo uh, Chodoro. But essentially, uh, mga kameta, ito kasi, essentially, uh, mga kameta, uh, when it comes, you cannot find a single Defense Secretary, entire ASEAN, that even implies anything close to this. Again, to be fair, in fairness naman, marami mga caveats, explanation, etc., but to openly question the, the value of direct diplomacy with China, that's, that's quite unique. You don't have anything like that in ASEAN. And some wonder if this is already no, this is already beyond hedging na. And this is almost saying, nandito na tayo sa kampo ng Amerika, kalaban na natin ng China. Some could interpret it that way. I don't think that's what the Defense Secretary per se is saying. But nevertheless, Gibo's statements are way ahead of anyone else in the region. I, I, I cannot remember any other defense secretary in recent memory. I mean, of course, we can talk about Vietnam, China in 1979 war or after 1988, yung mga Johnson's South Rift. Uh, we can talk about But in recent memory, wala kong, wala kong So, ito yung sinabi ni Gibo, no? It's not fruitful. There should be bilateral discussion by a time when we prove, when we are sure this is my personal belief that formal bilateral discussion only be held when it's proven that they are sincere. So, so, uh, you have a situation where I'm saying diplomacy makes sense if they're sincere. So in fairness, I think the headline is not doing justice to Gibo here. I think as Gibo meant it in much more nuanced sense, pero aminin natin, sobrang layo na natin sa mga ibang Asian countries in terms of yung etka basis access na binibigay natin sa mga uh, sa mga Amerikano. I, no, no other Asian country comes close to that, right? Uh, and then, not to mention, Meron tayo ngayon mga aerial patrols, di ba? Na kasama ang Amerika. Tignan niyo naman mga aerial patrols. You have, you have no other housing country doing anything close to that. You're looking at joint patrols with Australia and potentially quadrilateral joint patrols uh, with other countries, mga kameta, dito sa... So, again, this is extremely unique. Uh, we don't have any other country in the region who comes anywhere close to that, di ba? So, this is, the, this is the interesting, unique situation that we have right now. Okay, et, uh, may mga map dito kasi hindi ganun ka accurate yung geography but oh, malaman natin ang ABS-CBN so <laughs> pasensya na medyo you, know, you have to be very specific about the eh, pwede na yan actually okay to na, ah, so actually hindi okay yung uh, ABS version yung kapila yung medyo questionable yung nakita kong version medyo correct naman no? yung mga kapsat natin dyan sabihin nyo kung correct yung mga Isabella kagayan ano na yan okay sorry medyo ilokano tayo kasi Ay, uh, particular tayo dun sa position. 
So ito, yung kita mo yan. There's, there's no other housing country who has anything close to that. So unique talaga tayo dyan. Yung Joint Patrol, Aerial Patrols, di ba mga kameta na post natin dyan. Tingnan nyo naman, nag-aerial patrols na tayo with the United States. We haven't, wala kang manap na Asian country na may ginagawang ganyan, na may isang ibang bansa na kasama na nag-aerial patrol habang may active dispute with another superpower katulad ng uh, United States. And then tignan mo yung balikat ng exercises natin this year, lampas sa 15,000 troops. Galing hindi lang sa United States, galing sa Japan, galing sa Australia, even United Kingdom ay nandyan. So bigla ang Pilipinas ay parang hub ng mga multiple superpowers. Again, this is very unique mga kamera. You don't see anything like that in the rest of Asian countries. So that's why some are wondering if we're not only leaning to one side against the other, but we're fully aligning towards one side or the other. My contention is hindi pa tayo nag-fully align, but if current trend lines continue, medyo papunta na tayo dyan. Nevertheless, having said that, mga kameta, sa akin palaga, you know, there, there are things you can do. There, there, there are interesting dynamics here that we can look at. And I'll, I'll shortly from now, I'll discuss the case of Singapore. Because the case of Singapore is very instructive and interesting, even though sobrang layo yung kanilang situation. Because to begin with, ang Singapore po ay wala silang territorial dispute with China directly at sobrang laki yung kanilang bilateral trade and investment ties with China in ways that was not in the case in the Philippines. Kasi yun nga yung problema eh. Kaya nga, iba yung strategy ni BBM laban kay uh, Duterte because one big reason is, paano ni Digong, walang pumasok ng big ticket investments galing sa China. O saan yung mga high-speed railway nila? Saan yung Mindanao railway nila? Alas puro mga, puro mga binola lang yata tayo or sobrang palpak yung gobyerno natin to properly negotiate yung mga... Uh, either way, failed yung, yung investment strategy ni Digong. Di ba? Either way. So, ito yung gusto kong pakita sana kanina. So, ito yung sinisabi natin mga kameta na aerial patrol. So this is the first ever joint pat joint aerial uh diba? joint aerial patrols with the United States last isang week lang yan. 'Di ba? Kakaiba. Oh, 'di ba? Uh, I think that's an is that an F15 or F16? Clearly F15 is a and then uh giant aircraft. Uh, yeah. So it's level na to see anything like that between any other Asian country or any other as in claimants uh, to the United States when you have this dispute with China. Again, that's unique. Now, having said that, I'm not saying that there are no major exercises between US and other Asian countries. If anything, there are also major exercises. And, and if anything, this is where things are interesting. Actually, when it comes to level of security cooperation and quality of security cooperation, Arguably, actually, Singapore may have it better than us. Or their relationship with the U.S. is actually also very, very deep. No? Now, let me explain to you the case of Singapore because this is a very interesting case that I think is very instructive also for us. Now, the thing with Singapore is that they have very strong investment relations with China and they have also invested big time in China. May aman na sang Singapore and of course, you know, they want to have, you know, uh, a, a footprint in all major markets and production centers. Although some are wondering whether the investment of Singapore, yung mga industrial uh, ano nila, um, park nila sa China has been as successful or not. The, now, that's a long conversation we can have, but nevertheless, it's, it's hard to deny how big China is for Singapore. But having said that, this is the interesting thing. So kanina pinakita ko sa inyo mga kameta, yung joint aerial patrols ng Pilipinas at United States. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong, but... Gamit natin F-A-50. I think yung kabila is F-16 or F-15 fighter. I think F-15 yata yung fighter na But please correct me if I'm wrong. Now, the thing is this. Despite the fact that Singapore talks nicely, especially vis-a-vis -vis China, it has a very solid relationship with the United States. In fact, it's the only ASEAN country that has had access to the most advanced fighter on Earth developed by United States and Western NATO allies. This is F-35 fighters. If anything, Singapore, which already has, I think, four F-35 fighters, and I think F-35B is the one that can vertically go up and down. It's very uh, very uh, helpful dun sa Navy. Uh, they're going to have eight of that. So they're going to have a dozen F-35 fighters, which puts them in a very elite club of non-NATO allies, and some would even say non-fellow liberal democracies, that have access to this kind of technology. Not even in the Middle East do, I mean, 
except one country that everyone knows about, but Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, none of them have that F-35 fighter. In fact, some of them wanted to get it, especially United Arab Emirates, but, you know, it's complicated. Uh, we can discuss a lot about the Middle East. So, so Singapore is among a very select non-NATO and non-treaty ally countries that actually has access to America's most advanced weapon system. So, yes, mabait ang Singapore sa China, may mga sinisabi siyang here and there, but at the same time, they have very robust relationship with the United States. In fact, let me tell you, mga kameta, it's far more robust than you think. Here, here's another thing you have to keep in mind. In, in fact, the United States enjoys significant access to prized important naval facilities, Shanghai, in Singapore, right? So this is a report in 2019, Singapore renews military bases packed with the United States amid deepening defense ties with China. So this is what they do. They're, they're very smart, right? They, you know, they, they do some mid-level cooperation with China and then they do some higher level cooperation with the United States, get their F-35 fighters. They, they give access to their uh, littoral combat ships, right? Now, just to tell you how smart Singapore is, this is what they do. All right, this is their version of hedging. So this is from a fantastic journal article from a good friend of ours, Keiko Gaimonis. This is the journal article I want you guys to check. Uh, si Ang Guan Chu and, and so this is a this is a this is a journal article explaining Singapore's balancing strategy or hedging strategy rather or equidistant diplomacy between U.S. and China. It is not actually very equidistant. It's asymmetrical, right? And here, okay, pakita ko sa inyo at the. Here, here you see mga kameta. Okay? So, it is true that in, on paper, Singapore has defense relationship, good defense relationship with both U.S. and China, but it's not symmetrical, right? It's like they give, I don't know, they give a, <laughs> they give a Geely to one side, they get a BMW from the other side. They give a Jack to one side, they get a, they get a Benz from the other. They get a, you know, they give a... And then they get a Tesla from the other side. So it's not actually symmetrical. But it gives this impression that Singapore is very friendly with China. But actually, much, much deeper yung kanilang security relationship with the United States. And they have access to the best weapon systems also from the United States, right? This is, and this is where mga kameta actually na frustrate. Kasi kung titingnan mo yung uh, defense cooperation between the United States and Singapore, Tens of billions of dollars ang mga nabili nila mga weapon systems from United States in the past decade or so. Base sa mga numbers na official na meron tayo. Kumpara mo yun sa Pilipinas, yung total aid ng US sa atin in the past decade or so, just barely over a billion dollars. Now, obviously, mayaman ng bansang Singapore na gets ko yan. They're very advanced. But that's the problem na yung kita ko sa Pilipinas na matapang tayo sa rhetoric. Tama yung ginagawa natin on ground. But I think yung ating relationship uh, sa ating aliado ay... <laughs> malayo pa rin dun sa relationship na meron ng US sa mga hindi aliado na are treated like allies, right? So, uh, there's this expression, something like, f Singapore is a friend that acts like an ally, right? Uh, and then, of course, there are allies like Thailand that not necessarily act like friends. And then, there are cases like the Philippines na ally, sometimes friends, sometimes not so friend, and you don't know how reliable, and, 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 and mutually, there's a lot of problem with that. So, Ito yung mga sinasabi ko mga kameta. Ito yung mga sinasabi ko mga kameta. Don't fall for all of this simplistic idea na ah, buong ASEAN pro-China, Philippines lang hindi. It's actually a diverse set of strategies. Hedging strategy, different sides are employing. And I think some sides are smarter than others. So what I, what I try to do in this very brief uh, mini lecture vlog is to explain to you guys na we need to find the proper balancing kung saan while we have to rely on our allies and friends, walk time as rely on sa kanila, and at the same time, don't totally burn the bridges with the other side and provide yourself some room for maneuver. But most important of all is develop your own defensive deterrence capability on your own para ka hindi ka pichugin, right? Because if you look at it, yung mga ibang kapitbahay natin or malay natin kapitbahay, kaaway nilang China for years. Case in point, Singapore. I sorry, case in point, Australia. Sobrang problematic ng kanilang relationship with China over the past few years. Dahil sa AUKUS, uh, yung kanilang AUKUS na submarine deal, uh, dahil sa kanilang push for independent investigation dun sa sources of COVID-19 uh, sa China, all of those things. And yet, and yet, if you look at it, Australia's trade with China has boomed to around 300 billion, I think Australian dollars, uh, but still that's huge. 
uh, either Australia and US dollars, it actually has grown significantly. And nung pumunta si Albanese, yung leader nila sa China recently, he was respected. And, and more or less, natanggap ng China, uh, hindi, ito talaga, Australia is committed to its current uh, policy of strengthening its own de- de- deterrence, defensive capabilities, and also ability to project power, including yung kanilang AUKUS, nuclear powered submarine missile. So they stood their ground and eventually China blank- blinked and they became friendly. Tignan mo rin yung latest meeting between um, Biden and China. Uh, China, you know, making all of this drama about, oh, U.S. is so hostile to us, imposing sanction on us, all of this, oh, U.S. has a Cold War mentality, and then Xi Jinping goes to San Francisco and then meets all top business leaders and talks to Biden and talks to business leaders and says, you know, we, we want to be friends. We, we, we don't want to get into fights. So the reason is simple. Dahil malakas yung mga bansa na yan. Because they have strength and because they have shown st- strength of character, and hindi sila nagpa gaslight, hindi sila nagpa auto. Ayan, China is respecting them, right? China is, because China will respect you if you're respecting self respect. <laughs> if you're, you have respect for yourself, right? And you and for you to have respect for yourself, you have to make sure na hindi ka magpa pa auto. Katulad nung isa dyan na sabi niya, daming investment na papa, papasok, hindi naman pumasok. Or hindi ka snowflake, na konting ingay lang ng kabila. Ay, ako sige, wag na natin gawin yan. But having said that, it's important to still keep those communication channels, to keep direct engagement. So you're engaging, engaging, at the same time you're developing your deter- deterrence capability. That balance is very important. And more powerful and more advanced countries than us have more or less kept that balance. So they push back when they have to, but they engage where they have to. So there's a punch, there's a handshake. There's a punch, there's a handshake. There's a punch, there's a handshake. There's, there's that constant balancing. Kung puro ka lang handshake, pero wala kang lakas, aabusuhin ka talaga, right? But, kung puro ka naman ng punch at wala ka engagement, uh, you're asking for trouble, right? So, it's really getting that right balance which is important, right? Now, having said that, I think in fairness to the Philippines, I think in fairness to the Philippines, we're not doing too bad. Major risk yung ginagawa natin ngayon because sanay ng China na purong tatay style yung foreign policy natin na sige kayo na po, purong ganon, purong slavish, purong pro-China. Yung mga nakakaya ng mga style ni Digong dati, di ba, na parang naman, di ba? <laughs> na alas ka copy paste lang niya yung sinabi nung ano, di ba? Um, so, now China has to wake up to the reality ng ang Pilipinas ay hindi pichugin, hindi basta-basta. At in fairness naman, kung titingnan mo yung effort ng ating mga uh, gobyerno, ang ating mga top officials, they're doing what is what is necessary, what is important to do. At the, most, the latest thing na ginagawa natin is sinistrengthen natin yung position natin on the ground, including mga kameta, establishing itong mga new facilities sa West Philippine Sea. This, this, mga kameta, is extremely, extremely important because at the end of the day, kahit manalo ka sa international court, kahit ang dami mong sinabi, kahit marami kang aliado at kaibigan, ang mahalaga talaga dyan, mga kameta, is on the ground, dyan sa Pag-asa Island mismo, dyan sa 2nd Thomas Shoal sa Ayungin, dyan, at yun nga yung naging problema natin sa Panatag Shoal, eh. kung sana lang sa Panatag Shoal, sa Scarborough Shoal, kung sana lang meron tayong mga facilities noon and all, hindi pwede basta-basta ano lang ng mga Chino yan. Dahil wala nga tayong facilities doon, wala tayong presence, kaya nung kinuha nila, wala na. At o, hindi natin pinasabihin na at, nahirapan na tayo prove na sa atin yun, in, you know, in terms of ge- in geopolitical materials. And, and also, paano mo naman i-attackin yung mga aliado mo? Sabihin niya, eh, wala ka naman doon, ba't kita tutulungan? Bakit sa'yo ba yan? Di ba yan? So kaya US immediately said, ay wala kami alam dyan. But kung, pero kung may troops ka doon, katulad ng Tito Island, pag-asa, at kung may troops ka doon katulad ng uh, dyan sa Ayungin Shoal, Second Thomas Shoal, mapipilitan talaga yung mga aliado mo tutulungan ka even though sabihin niya neutral sila. So yun yung sinasabi natin, mga kameta, na mahalaga na you develop your own position on the ground. And I've been saying this for a very, very long time across different administration, mga kameta, that is extremely, extremely important for us. See, it's very ex- ex- extremely important for us to develop our own position on the ground. All right? It's very, very important that we what, what we develop our own position on the ground. Ayusin ko lang ng konti yan, mga kameta. Oh, sorry. It's very important to be develop our, our own position on the ground, mga kameta, because push comes to shove, dapat you make sure yung face, first wave of bullying and attack pa lang, you can repel that. Because if you cannot help yourself, hindi ka tutulungan ng iba. You have to have that ability to, for the first 
wave of resistance, right? And dapat na presence ka on the ground. At you can give bloody nose dun sa kabila. You have to be like a poison shrimp. Katulad ng sinabi ni Lee Kuan Yew. You, if, you, if you cannot beat the big fish, and if you're not even big enough to be a small fish, at the very least, become a poison shrimp. Or even better, be like a porcupine. Alright? Wala kang, you know, fangs. You cannot beat the other side, you know, fang to fang. But, if you, you have that ability to defend yourself, then the other side will think twice before attacking you because may hurt din sila. So, developing that minimum credible defense and domain awareness capability is very, very important to get the first level of respect. But beyond that, you have to build alliances, diplomatic alliances, military alliances, and eventually, once you reach a certain point, re-respetuin ka ng kabila. You know, even bullies, even bullies are not blind to certain realities. At some point, when they realize na palaban ka and you're gonna stand your ground, they're gonna blink. Don't believe me? Look at what, <laughs> look at the situation with Australia, among others. And dami, inaway-away nila Australia, tinitreten-treten nila Australia with sanctions, everything, and eventually they had to blink when they realized palaban ng Australia. I mean, of course, Australia is more advanced and wealthier than the Philippines, pero what is Australia compared to China? <laughs> like, what is Australia? Not even 40 million people compared to 1 billion of China, right? Uh, China's second largest economy compared to what in Australia. And yet, when they stood the ground, ni respeto sila. And guess what? This is what Vietnam has been doing. This is what Indonesia has been doing. Um, so a lot of our neighbors who also have maritime disputes or territorial disputes with China, they have also been standing the ground. But once you reach a certain threshold of self-respect and your own capabilities, China will respect you. That's just how it works. Otherwise, kung puro ka lang, sir, sir, ma'am, sir, ganyan, wala mangyari sa'yo. The, 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 this is what we did under Digong. It didn't work. It didn't work. Because if you're puro shake hands and purong subservience, pero wala kang leverage, wala kang deterrence capability, wala mangyayari dyan. You're not gonna get the respect. But if you stand your ground, but at the same time you engage diplomatically, make sure your rhetoric is at a healthy level, then there's a far greater chance that you will find not maybe a compromise. It's hard to get a compromise because territorial maritime disputes yan, eh? sovereignty ang pinagsapan. But some sort of a modus vivendi or understanding. Yun po yung hinahanap natin ngayon dito sa West Philippines. So it's very, very important, mga kameta, that we, we keep those very basic things in mind. You keep those very basic things in mind. So so again, ha, just to recap, mga kameta, if you look at ASEAN, it's not a question of being pro-China or pro-United States per se. All right, with possible exception of Cambodia, which is very close to China and increasingly having a hostile relationship uh, with the United States, almost all ASEAN countries in one way or another don't want to choose between the two sides and want to keep good economic relationship with China because China is geographically too close. It's a geographic reality. And at the same time, they want to have some level of cooperation with the United States. Much higher, of course, in the case of the Philippines, but also to a certain degree in the case of Thailand, Singapore. I mentioned Singapore, for instance, has you know, F-35 fighters, the most advanced fighter jets, stealth fighter, you know, fifth generation fighters, right? That it's getting from the United States. Also, Indonesia is developing its defensive capability with the, uh, with the help of the United States. They're getting F-16 fighters. So, you, you want to have the defense relationship with the United States, also the economic relationship with China. Pero pag binuli ka ng isa, you, you have room for maneuver, right? But you do not fully choose between one side over the other side because once you do that, once you burn the bridges, then two bad things happen. Automatically, kalaban mo yung isang superpower. And pangalawa, what's going to happen is that automatically you're over-dependent on another superpower. And what? You might end up actually as... You may end up on the menu, right? If you don't know how to play it between the two sides. Now, this so-called hedging strategy I mentioned is useful in conditions whereby it's not an all-out conflict between the superpowers. In conditions where there is no fear of all-out war. And I think we're still there. So short of that situation, I think hedging is the best strategy. Don't align with one side uh, over the other totally, but have some room for maneuver. Lean on one side more than the other if one side is more threatening to you and one side is more helpful to you, at least on this issue. But at the same time, be open to changing that position depending on the facts on the ground. Reliability for ally, diplomacy yung dun sa mga kaaway mo in terms of you know the realities of your military capabilities. But as I always said, the most important thing, the most important thing is develop your own defensive and deterrence capability. Because once you become at least a poison shrimp, or, or, or even better, a porcupine, magdadalawang isip mga bullies to bully you. Because you can hurt them big time. So, this is why it's important na hindi tayo magpag-gaslight sa Pilipinas. 
it is not our fault. We should not be faulted for fighting for our own sovereign rights, right? And as far as tensions in the region is concerned, it's not because we are claiming 85% of the South China Sea Basin. It's because there's one country claiming what belongs to Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, among others. That's the source of problem. But having said that, you cannot just all be punches. You also have to be able to engage. And it's getting that balance. It's very difficult, but that's exactly what we should do in the Philippines. Find the perfect balance. But while we're finding the perfect balance, let's do our assignments, let's do the minimum, and let's protect what we can protect in the West Philippine Sea. And I say so far, in fairness, I think we're moving in the right direction. So on that note, I don't think there's going to be war anytime soon, God willing, of course. There's always unknown unknowns. But as far as what we know, and even unknown knowns, right, um, it's, it's, this is a psychological game. Dapat di tayo magpabuli. Dapat hindi tayo mag... Uh, Mag maging self-defeating or loser mindset. All right? That's a very, very important thing. And less to our assignment in the meantime. And the more we have self-respect and the more we develop our own capabilities, the more our allies will be interested in helping us. And the more the bullies will think twice before bullying us. On that note, thank you very much, mga kameta. I hope you appreciated this, you know, quite mini lecture about uh, ASEAN, how ASEAN countries are dealing with China. And how should we find our own perfect balance when we deal with China? So it's not about being pro-China, pro-US. I don't think we have to go down that road. It's about finding the proper balance between US and China when we deal with the superpowers. And at the same time, it's about protecting our red lines and making sure there's a baseline when it comes to dealing with other powers. After all, with one superpower, we do not have any maritime or territorial dispute. They may have done horrible things 100 years ago, or they were not a good ally for the past 50 years. We can debate about that. But the other side is the one bullying us in the West Philippine Sea. So also be wary of false equivalence. But as I said, the West Philippine Sea also should not be the entirety of our relationship with other powers. We have to make sure there, that on other issues, we can find some sort of common understanding, but never compromise yung mga baselines mo. That's very important. On that note, thank you very much. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga kameta natin. Thank you so much for, for really a fantastic week. I, 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 I always enjoy having this kind of conversations because while I'm talking to you guys, napapaisip rin ako. While I'm talking to you guys, nagigets ko rin na paano natin i-explain to mga issue na to, how do we find the, also find our, my, our own right balance to, to make it theoretically sound but at the same time not too academic and not too boring, right? Hindi yan madali, especially if it's like almost end of the week na, almost 11 p.m. na, di ba? But this is the challenge and I always appreciate this challenge because this is the least I can do. No, this is the least I can do help in terms of raising critical thinking pagdating sa West Philippine Sea. At the end of the day, I want you guys to decide on your own, choose for your own, what is the best way forward. Pero wag, wag kayo magpa, magpa-uto. Alright? Wag tayo mag-uto-uto. No? Na, ah, magkagyera na, yan na yan. Or, di ba, yung mga ganun, yung ganun yan, ano yan. Two levels yan, gaslighting at saka psychological games yan. No? Kaya wag tayo, mag, wag tayo magpa-sci-war lang ng basta-basta. Alright? The good news is, China is not Russia. It's, it's a much more rational and self-constrained and self-restrained superpower. And it's a neighbor. You know, we have to find an understanding with them. But we have to have self-respect and make our red lines clear. Kaya yan. Nakita natin with other kapitbahay natin nagagawa nila. Kaya din natin yan. Alright? The last thing we need is going back to Digong style of China. I love you enough that and get, get nothing. And if anything, things getting worse in the West Philippine Sea. It's not just about peace. Of course, everyone wants peace. But peace has to come with justice. And justice also means that the Philippines' legitimate sovereign rights have to be respected. On that note, thank you very much. God bless. Paulit ulit na ako. But mahalaga yan eh. Mahalaga yan eh. Alright? Thank you. Thank you sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta natin. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned uh, for more discussion along these lines and also for more collaborations. Baka naman, ang isipin natin, RRW also. Baka maganda siguro. Tatlo kami ni Ronald at saka Walden Bellio. Para medyo diversity of views na lang. Oh, dito sa West Philippines. I think each of us have a very unique take on this. Thank you very much. God bless. And talk to you soon.